All right, all right, all right. Hey, YouTube, I'm Lucky, and in today's news story, we're covering a huge one. Joe Blackburn, who's the game director for Destiny 2, actually created an entire thread addressing all of the issues that Bungie is currently looking at. They're trying to be extremely transparent about all this stuff, and one of those issues was the Wellspring drop rates ruining the exotic Glaive quest for a lot of people inside Destiny 2. So let's go ahead without further ado and jump right into this one. We have Joe Blackburn here. His tweet reads, at the very top, the team's been playing a lot of Witch Queen. Wanted to give some quick updates on where our head is at with some week one reactions. First, aren't super happy with how unpredictable it can be to complete report relic data for the evidence board quest chain. We're still monitoring the time commitment for unlocking and upgrading crafted weapons, but the drop rates and unlock requirements for the Wellspring Throne World weapons are currently going to gate off too many players from being able to earn their exotic glaives. If you don't know about this right now, if you're trying to get your exotic glaive, you need to go and do the wellspring and you need to get the red border weapon to drop for you. And once you've gotten enough for, of them to drop for you, then you can progress the quest so that way you can get your exotic glaive. Presumably after the raid, we don't entirely know that. Um, in a patch targeting next week, we will be increasing the drop chances for weapons in wellspring. Yes and adding a bad luck protection for both getting a standard drop and getting a deep side resonant version of the weapon. That is awesome to hear. I couldn't be any happier about that. Feel free to join me in the Wellspring this week if you want to be one of the first for a crafted version of these weapons, but know that next week, this step should be a lot easier to make reliable progress. So just base it on how much time you have. Myself personally, I don't know if I'm really gonna go for it. I think it's a little bit too much of a time commitment. I've heard people spending 10 plus hours in one day just to get all of the red box weapons. So it gets really crazy. Next, Ascendant Ally drop rates aren't where we want them. This Thursday, we are getting some fixes for Ascendant Allies to be more predictable in high level activities. Uh, with our patch targeting this Thursday, you will have greater chances to receive an Ascendant Ally, not just by the difficulty tier of the activity, but also based on your Platinum, Gold, Silver completion level. I personally haven't had that big of an issue. I completed a variety of the Wellsprings and I got a bunch of them to drop. Um, I would obviously like more. I'm not saying I don't want any more, but I haven't personally had an issue with that. Let me know in the comments below if you've been having an issue with uh, the Ascendant Allies. This will mean higher chances at earning Ascendant Allies for gold slash platinum completions, but we will continue to monitor and adjust drop rates as the season progresses. Finally, we are monitoring, monitoring several gameplay sandbox elements as we head towards the world's first race. Right now, we are looking at an interaction that centers around Syntheseps and a few interactions that center around Suppressive Glaive as problematic. Now, I'm not entirely sure if they're talking about Syntheseps working with Baby Hammer. I don't entirely know what build they're talking about with Syntheseps. When I do get that information, you best believe I'll be bringing you a new story covering that. If you do know that, feel free to comment it down below. Uh, suppressive Glaive, however, I do see that as being a slightly problematic. I mean, it does suppress everything, and it does seem to be extremely effective. Um, I don't know if, how they're going to adjust that or nerf that. I don't know if that, I feel like you have to get so close to get in such close encounter range with enemies that Suppressive Glaive should be pretty strong, but we'll see what they end up doing. Expect more information around our plan here in the TWAB with both short-term solutions to protect the world's first race and longer-term adjustments. Overall, we are very happy. We are very happy with the smooth launch of the Witch Queen and now are buckling down to look at how things like Void 3.0 and weapon crafting are affecting the rest of the game so we can start dialing things in to create a solid year five of Destiny 2. It's been great to enjoy the Witch Queen last week alongside one of the best communities in gaming, and we can't wait to get out and play the raid and the rest of the season of the Risen along with all of you. So there it is. That's the entirety of the thread. Let me know your thoughts down below. I can't wait for the drop rates to be adjusted in the, in the um, Wellspring activity because that thing is painful right now. So... That's a wrap on this news story. Make sure to subscribe with notifications on if you want to stay up to date on all things Destiny 2, The Witch Queen. Smash the like button. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.